Hello, I am Dr. Jason Abbott. I'm the senior pastor here in Northside Baptist Church. And we would like to thank you for taking the time and stopping and viewing our Judgment House drama from 2018 entitled Unexpected. Uh, this is a walk-through drama that our church puts on uh, every fall. And uh, this is the recording that we took this year, so we hope that you enjoy watching uh, the drama as it unfolds. Today, you will meet the Endicott family. Jim, the father, is the family breadwinner. And Carol, the mom, she runs the home with love. They have three children, Jason, Abby, and Lily, who are all thriving in such a warm, loving environment. And by all accounts and purposes, the Endicott family seems like the perfect family. But there's something missing, something that they don't even realize. Let's join in as they finish up their breakfast and they start their day. Okay, guys, let's see. Looking at the schedule for today, um, Jim, got your suitcase packed and all ready for your trip. So are you leaving just straight from the office or where are you guys going? Yeah, Roger's going to take us there for you after work. So we're, we're heading out tonight, but I think our meetings are all day tomorrow, so we're not even going to be back until probably 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for getting my suitcase packed, though. I don't enjoy that part of it. I, I know how much you love packing your suitcase. Okay, so I'm going to go to the soup kitchen today. Um, and then, Jason, you've got math and football, is that right? Jason! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Math and football, is that right? I think so. should be over around 6.30, sometime like that. Okay. Don't forget, I'm going with Sarah after school to her church for drama team practice. They're looking okay. for more people to get involved, and she thought that I might be interested. She said it'd be over about, by, about 5.30, and I told her we could probably pick her up, and she could just hang out with us for the rest of the night. Okay, so I'll pick you girls up at 5.30 at the church, and I'll just take you to school. You guys can watch the rest of his practice. And then, why don't we all go eat at the Sidewalk Cafe after that? We haven't been there yet. Oh, yes, I love that place. Their sandwiches are so good. Oh, you've been there. Have you been there? Yeah, we went there one day. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Good, we'll go together. Okay, now you have... Um, you. Mm -hmm. You're busy. You have birthday party tonight, right? Do you have Kylie's present? Uh, I think, yes. It's in the backpack. I hope Kylie likes it. Oh, I think she'll like it. You remembered it. That's important to you, remembering is important. Yes. Okay, so you got your present, pick you guys up, we'll all do that, and then we'll all go eat. Okay. Oh, gosh, guys, it's time to go. We gotta go. Time to go to school. Get your bags. Get out of here. Have a great day. We'll be there for the bus, guys. I'll miss you. See you tomorrow night, okay? okay. I'll be late. I'll come in and give you hugs and kisses. Bye. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I really want to go to this meeting. Well, you're not going to go with Are you going to take me to work? Yes. Oh, I'd love for all the guys that work to see a show for me around anyway. <laughs> Well, I'll take you to work, and then I'll go to the soup kitchen, and then do the rest of our day. Okay. Well, I hate to miss dinner at Sidewalk Cafe, because it is really good, and I was going to recommend something for you. Uh-huh, yeah. Glad you go places without me. I got a special treat in your suitcase for you. It's later in the day now, and Abby is with her friend Sarah at her church's drama team practice. Sarah has been trying to get Abby to come to her church with her and she thought it might help to introduce Abby to some of her friends. We're going to join into practice, already in progress. Hi, I'm Mr. Hands. And I'm Mr. Chase. What? Hang on. Now, you can call me Mr. Chase. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> All right, anyway. guys. Let's get to practice. Remember what we talked about last time, we need to make sure that your hand motions are really easy to see because there are little kids that we're going to be performing for. So I'm going to start with the story about Jesus walking on water and then you guys will make your hand motions. <laughs> All right, and then after that we'll get to the letters. So, hey Sarah. I'm sorry we're late. I mean, this is my friend Abby. I thought she'd be great at the Black Eyed Ministry still. I got her to tag along with you today. That's awesome. It's nice to meet you, Abby. We're always needing more help with these things. So if you want to hang back, you can watch the practice. Thanks, Mrs. Lake. Yeah. All right, we're back over here. The part where we go over the ABCs of salvation. All we have to do is follow and believe the ABCs of salvation. That's right. So, um, hey, Sarah, why don't you and Abby actually help with this part? We have this one and this. So when we get to 
this part, you'll just hold up your letter so the black light shines on it, and then you'll read what's on the back. I'll start with A. A is to admit that we've done wrong. Everybody does bad things, and those bad things are what keep us from being with Jesus. B is to believe that Jesus came to die for us. By believing he did this and being sorry for doing these bad things, we can live with him someday in heaven. Jesus wants to be our friend forever. He wants for you and for me and for all of us to be in heaven with him. But the only way to get there is to believe in him. And now to see, Abby. C is to choose to follow Jesus. Once we believe in him, we choose to be his friend forever because we want to live for Jesus. And that's our bottom line for this month. Jesus wants to be our friend forever. Really good, guys. That's great. So when we're done with that part, I'll explain to the kids again that Jesus simply wants to be our friend because he loves us so much. And that to spend an eternity with him, all we have to do is admit, believe, and choose. Any questions? Yes. Can I, like, wear these six shades when we perform? <laughs> Probably not in the dark room, bud. <laughs> You're right. All right. If that's all, let's pray. We'll be done with practice. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time of practice, and we ask that as we prepare to share your love with the children of the church, that you would use us for your glory. And Lord, if there are any that we minister to who don't know you, please speak to their hearts so that they'll come to admit, believe, and choose you to be their Savior. Amen. In Jesus' name. We need as much time as we can to work on the hand gestures for the skin, so. <laughs> I didn't see you come in. I got to help read some lines for a script they're doing for their kids. Isn't the black light awesome? Yeah, I just caught the very end of it, but it is cool. It's cool. Hi, I'm Carol. Hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, it's nice to meet you. My name's Heather, but the kids all call me Mrs. H. Oh, well, thanks for letting Abby help. I know she, I think she'll get a kick out of it. That'll be fun for her. Oh, no problem. She seems like a really great kid. Does your family attend church around here? Or? Oh, gosh, no. No, we don't have time for that with my husband's work schedule, dragging these kids all over the place, all the places they think they need to be, and get them all the things they need to get. We don't have time for any of that. Um, but no, we, we, but thanks again for letting her help. I think she'll really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know life can be really crazy sometimes. Right. Yeah, we spend yeah. a lot of time talking with the youth about how important family time is. Good. But uh, if you and your family are looking for a church some Sunday, we'd really love to have you here. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. It really is so nice. And, Unless you guys can magically add another day of the week, I don't know how we would make that work, but it is so nice of you. Thanks so much. All right, you guys ready to go? Let's head on yeah. to school and we'll move on our day. Thanks again. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Abby. We'll see you guys next week. All right, bye-bye. What a simple and yet understandable presentation of God's love for us. Even a child can understand how much God loves him or her. Abby heard some things that she had never heard before, and now she has some questions for Sarah. They're outside in the hallway at Jason's math club practice waiting for him to finish up. Let's see what happens. It looks like practice is still going strong. He's so busy with math club and football practice. But I'm glad he gets done early today, so he can come eat with us. I'm no good at math, that's for sure. I love acting, though. That's why I joined the drama team at church. I could tell you really enjoyed it. I could also tell you believed in what you were saying, about God loving us and wanting to be our friend forever. Well, absolutely, Abby. That's the whole reason why I go to church. I have to admit, I don't quite understand everything about Jesus. I mean, we celebrate his birth at Christmas and his death at Easter, but what all does that have to do with me? Well, Jesus' whole purpose in coming to this earth was for you, Abby, and for me, and for every other person who has ever lived and who ever will live. Jesus loved us enough to leave his Father and his home in heaven to live here. He lived here for 33 years, trying to show people how much he loved them. Then he died a horrible death on the cross. But his death isn't really what we celebrate at Easter. It's not. On Easter, we celebrate the fact that he didn't stay dead. You see, there was a punishment for everyone who knows wrong, which is called sin. And that punishment is being separated from God for eternity after death. That's what death really is. And the only way to get out of that punishment was for a perfect, innocent person to die. That person was Jesus. He never did anything wrong, Abby, but he was willing to die for the people who had. And then three days later, God rose him from the dead. He never did anything wrong, but was willing to die for the people who had. Well, that's quite a sacrifice. But Sarah, you don't have to believe all that. 
can a person who just try to be good? God wouldn't, God wouldn't punish someone who's trying really hard to obey him. Doesn't he love everybody? Well, yes, he does love everyone. He made everyone. But the point is, God is perfect. He's completely, absolutely, and totally perfect. And he lives in heaven, which is completely, absolutely, and totally perfect, too. Abby, to be in his presence, we have to be perfect. But no one is perfect. Jesus is. That's the point. Abby, God loves us so much that he's the one that came up with the plan to pay for our mistakes. I never thought about it that way. Jesus must really love us. But what did it mean when you guys were saying having to choose Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Well, Jesus paid the penalty. But each person has to believe in him and accept what he did on the cross and repent of their own sins. I did that after church one Sunday last year. I realized that I'd done things that weren't right, and I wanted Jesus to be my savior. So I talked to him in prayer, and I asked him to, to well, come into my heart. So what happened when you did that? I felt relieved. Like I had a new friend I could confide in. But I didn't hear any heavenly music, and I didn't see any white doves flying around. I guess I would just say I felt calm, like I had done the right thing. I started reading my Bible more, because I wanted to know more about how Jesus wants me to live. But I didn't become perfect all of a sudden. I just know that when I do something wrong, I feel convicted. And I know that if I ask, God will forgive me. That's really amazing. My mom always tells me to do good to others as you'd want them to do to you. But she never told me all this stuff about Jesus. Sarah, I think I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, like he is for you. Could you maybe help me? Sure, Abby. Did you realize this exactly what we were talking about at drawing practice tonight? You just talk to Jesus in prayer and tell him how you feel. And remember the ABCs of salvation when we talked about. You're right. Jesus, Sarah has told me so much about you. And I A, admit that I am a sinner and I have done wrong. And I B, believe that you are God's son and came to the earth to die and save us for our sins. And I C, choose you to be my Lord and Savior forever. Amen. Was that okay? It was perfect, Abby. I heard any special words. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to tell the drama team on Sunday. You'll come to church with me Sunday, won't you? So you can be there when I tell them? Sure, I guess. But I've got a lot of catching up to do, though, just as much as you do about Jesus. I'm so happy for you. Whoa, did I just walk around with girl talk? Just the most important girl talk ever. Jesus, or er, Sarah was telling me about Jesus, and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. Well... You seem happy, but isn't it kind of deep? It's not deep at all. Jesus did all the hard stuff. We just have to believe in what he did. It's not complicate complicated? Well, some people try to make it complicated, but like Abby said, we just have to believe in Jesus. Hey guys, there you guys are. Mom, guess what I did? I made the most important decision of my life. What could that be? I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Accepting him as your Lord and Savior? Well, that's interesting. You'll have to tell me more about it while we're eating. Who wants to go eat at this sidewalk cafe? Out of my way! I'm starving! Come on, girls. <laughs> what an exciting day for Abby. She learned about God's plan and accepted his gift of salvation. Jason was interested in finding out more, but Carol seemed a little skeptical of Abby's decision. In the Bible, Jesus clearly says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Why would anyone look for a different way after Jesus died to provide eternal life for us so freely? Well, the day isn't over yet for the Indicots. They're off to dinner at the Sidewalk Cafe. Maybe they've picked up their conversation about Abby's decision again. Let's go see what's happening. Dispatch 2127. <laughs>
There's broken glass everywhere. Your mommy wouldn't want you to get hurt. We've called 911. Some people are coming to help her. Everything's going to be all right. Does anybody know CPR? Did anybody call 911? Yeah. These people need help over by the truck. Someone tell me what happened here. Stay back. We need room for the medics to work. That was certainly an unexpected turn of events. Carol Endicott, Abby Endicott, and Sarah Pierce all died at the scene. Jason was knocked unconscious, but only had minor injuries. Lily was in the restroom when the accident occurred and was protected from the scene. No one can predict a tragedy like that. Now Jason Endicott is trying to deal with this awful event. We find him a few days later at home in his bedroom, all alone. Let's listen in as he talks to himself. mom in the world. I never doubted that you loved me. You always gave my heart and mind. Abby, I never really told you that you were a great sister. A preacher came by this morning to talk with us about the funeral services and some of the things he said reminded me about what you told me the day of the accident. Remember, first at school and then later at the cafe, when mom went to the bathroom? Because of your story, the preacher's comments made sense. You said that you'd accepted Jesus as your savior and that you were forgiven of your sins and that you knew where you were going to spend eternity look so happy and had a sense of peace about you. I just, I couldn't explain to you. I still can't. Thank you for sharing with me what you believed. I, I really want the peace you have been in my life right now. I just, 
just wish you were here to talk with me about it. I could really use some answers, and I really, really want to see you again. Someday. Dear God, One of the biggest tragedies of death are the unanswered questions from the people who are left behind. Can we really know what happens after death? Is there life after death? The Bible tells us that life is like a vapor or the morning fog. It only lasts for but a brief time, and then eternity begins. Where will we spend eternity? That all depends on what choice we've made in our life here on earth. The Bible says that each person is destined to die once. And after that comes judgment. The Bible says that Jesus, God's Son, came and lived on this earth, died a cruel death on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins, was buried, and three days later rose from the dead. God offers his free gift of salvation to everyone who believes in Jesus and accepts him as their Savior, the only way to be reconciled to God. Everyone who does so will be adopted as a son or daughter into God's family and will dwell with him in eternity in heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved this world that he gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. I have before me here the Lamb's Book of Life. In this book are written the names of all those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Some of you have made preparations for this moment, but many have not. As I call your name, please step forward. Sarah Pierce. Sarah, you recognized Jesus' gift for you and accepted the salvation that was freely given. And in the last hours before your earthly death, you had the joy and privilege of sharing with your friend Abby how to have forgiveness of her sins and become friends with Jesus. Come now and meet Jesus face to face. Abby Endicott. Here I am, sir. Abby, many people would say it's a tragedy for a teenager to lose her life at such a young age. But you've chosen the right path. You've chosen to accept Jesus' free gift of salvation. Now you're ready to step into the real life of eternity where you will never experience pain or sorrow again. You will spend your existence in the presence of Jesus the one who gave his life to save yours. Enter now into heaven. Heaven? Really? Oh, it's amazing. <clears throat> Carol Endicott, please step forward. Yes, sir, here I am. I am just so glad to see that Abby and Sarah have made their way I just told them I knew all roads would lead to heaven. I, can I just join the girls now? I'm sorry, Carol, but you will not be allowed to join Abby and Sarah in heaven. Why? You did not choose to accept the gift of eternal life through the blood shed by Jesus. Because you did not accept his payment for your sins, you must now pay for your own sins. No, I'm a really good person. I have done all the things I'm supposed to do. I, have, I worked at the soup kitchen today. I was there today. I, I have always put my family before, before me, and I put everyone else before me. I don't understand. Would you propose that you have done nothing wrong? Well, no, no one is perfect, but I have just done my very best. That has to mean something. All, the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one can claim to be perfect before God, and God cannot allow sin into heaven. That's why he allowed his son to pay the punishment for your sins but you chose not to accept that gift. And now, 
You must pay for your own sins with eternal you. separation. I, I will God. accept Jesus. I can't. I, you have to give me another chance, please. Take her away. As I call your name, please raise your hand. Jessica. Jameson. June. Susan. Judy, Kenny, Roy, Shirley, Sue, Brecklin, Jill. It is not your time yet, but remember this. No one knows the day or the hour that their soul will be required of them. And one day, you will face judgment. You are dismissed for now, but when that most important day comes, will your name be found in the Lamb's Book of Life? For your sake, I hope so. We have just seen We have just seen three people enter into their eternity. The judge's sentences had nothing to do with how they lived their lives. The judgment was based solely on whether or not their name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The book that records the names of all of those who have trusted Christ as their Savior. Now, their eternal fates have been sealed. There is no second chance. Let's see what the first eternity is all about. You'll hate everything you used to love. You'll long for your freedom. 
and never find it. You will have eternal regret, absolute hopelessness, everlasting separation from anyone you ever cared about or loved. There will be no smiles, no jokes, no parties to life or thrills of happiness of any kind. Not in my hell. No light! No water. And no second chances. <laughs> oh. Sounds awful, doesn't it? Well, God made hell for me and my followers. And he kicked us out of heaven. And he gave me is for real? The Bible says it is. Hell is a place of eternal torture and punishment. And once you're there, you can never get out. But I'm glad to say that hell doesn't have to be your final destination. There is the second alternative to the eternity of the three individuals that we just watched.
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Sarah, it's him. It's, it's really Jesus. I created the heavens and the earth. I know all the stars by name. And I know your names, Abby and Sarah. Welcome to your eternal home. Jesus, thank you so much for making a way for me to be here with you right now. Sarah, I love you. And because of my love to you, I went to the cross to die for you. Now you can enjoy heaven with me forever. I never imagined that heaven would be this beautiful. Everything is so clean and pure. I just feel happy. I just want to be near you, Jesus. It is my greatest joy to see two of my children in my presence. Sarah, thank you for telling Abby about my gift of salvation. Abby, although your decision to follow me came only hours before your death, the seeds you planted in your brother Jason have come to harvest. What do you mean? My dear child, right now, your brother Jason is speaking with Mrs. H, or as you call her, and at this very moment, he is surrendering his life to my call. Thank you so much, Jesus. Abby, Sarah, I have created this wonderful place for you. There are many, many unexpected surprises waiting for you. Now enjoy the home I've made for you. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine. We don't know all of the glories of heaven, but we do know that Jesus will be there, ready to welcome us all home. This story, this drama that you have just witnessed, is entitled Unexpected, because so many times in our lives, they take unexpected twists and turns that no one could have predicted. Maybe you didn't expect to come to Judgment House or visit this viewing of our drama until maybe a friend suggested it, or it was just something that you found on the internet. Maybe you uh, didn't plan to spend the last 40 minutes of your time watching this video, but you did. And there's a reason for it. There was a purpose for it. None of us know how much longer we have on this earth. None of us know the day or the hour that will pass. But Jesus says this in Revelation 3.20, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. You have a choice to make. Before your day of judgment arrives, the choices that you make while on this earth will impact your eternity forever. Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you made that decision to follow him? If not, can I encourage you to contact us at northsideneosho.com or call us at 417-451-3169 that someone could talk to you about what it means to become a believer, about what it means to make that decision and to seal your eternity, an eternity that you will spend with the Lord. Thank you again. My name is, again, Jason Abbott, and I appreciate your time in viewing our drama of Judgment House this year. God bless.